Nick? Okay. We'll call the meeting to order. It's seven o'clock. Cool. Um, I will just announce for everybody else's benefit as well. We are going to try to go through things efficiently um, because Jack needs to be someplace else at eight o'clock. <laughs> and I said we could probably do it because I don't see that the agenda is terribly heavy, but obviously there are going to be those of us who are going to sit here and watch Beetlejuice afterward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Minutes from September 10th. Let's please have a motion. I move to approve. And a second. Thank you, Joanne. Are there any comments or corrections or anything else that needs to be attended to? In that case, all in favor? Unanimous, thank you. We do not have publics tonight to speak. On to the roof. Let's go. Yeah. 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 I'll look yeah. Yeah. here if you don't mind. <laughs> Well, you're the choral director. <laughs> That's right. I'm used to being surrounded in front of everybody. Not doing it. Okay. Yeah. So the, 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 the basic gist here is that Gale International will be here next week. I think they're here Wednesday and Thursday. That's what they're scheduled to be here for to oversee the test cuts from the company whose name I don't have written here. Asks. It with a T. Is it the one Tyson. that was in the, was it the one that was in the, actually? No. Oh, a different one. Okay. The, the one in the package, that's, we're getting to that. Okay. Sorry. No, no, no. Well, it was, the, yeah, it was the one that they had enlisted in, and then it was the one in the proposal, the roofer. Anyway. Yeah, we're talking about, yeah, talking about the roofer. They had to be here with the roofer to do the test sets. And so in the course of that conversation, um, sort of a little bit late in the day, uh, last week, John contacted me and said um, essentially with a, with a thought that he had had, which is that if we are to do the demolition, if we're going to get to the point of having to do a demolition of the roof, if we have to tear it off and replace it with something else, apparently, and we know this from now from experience of doing the repair in the children's room. I don't know if we talked about this at the last meeting, but then, you know, in the in the children's room when they're doing the repair there, they had to test before they could pull things apart. They had to test for hazardous materials. Mm -hmm. Even though the building is brand new, they still by law have to test. Um, so it came up in the conversation that a similar process would need to take place on the roof. And John was suggesting since we are going to have the roof up up that we would take those samples. The problem is that I have not been able to, um, as of 5.30 this afternoon, I had not heard back from uh, the building town building inspector to find out what would be required as far as it's, like, how many samples do they need? What's the formula? Is there a formula? What's the basis um, to be able to really evaluate the proposal that Gail put forward? Um, which, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry because I don't have the proposal with me. Do you know what the, the amount was for that? Or should I put it through? Patrick, who's John? John is the, John is the, the, the Gale fellow. Gale okay. John Husky. I think it was 29,500. 3875. Oh, 3875. For no. the hazmat testing. That's just for the testing. Yes. So this is for this is for that one company to come out, take the samples, and analyze them. Of course, we have all can be pretty darn sure that there is no such thing in there. But of course, they need to do it. So my question is, what is the minimum amount of testing that is required? And can we have that amount of testing done? Uh, and, and would it be cheaper than this? Because he also said, and it actually says it in the, in the proposal that 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 cost covers up to 50 samples. And so my question is, do we need to take 50 samples? Like, what does that even mean? You know, why are, why, are, why that number? Um, and if, we, if we're only paying for, I mean, if we're only getting 10, why are we paying for 50? 50, right. um, So I don't know what the deal is with that. And um, the company that we dealt with at the time when we were doing the construction, and particularly when the demolition was happening at the poker school, was a company called, I believe it was ATC. 
And um, so my question was, again, if I could get the information from the building inspector, and again, this is time sensitive because we want to be able to do it. The whole point is to be able to do it while the roof is opened up. Because if we have to do, if we end up doing the demolition, it's not like they can come and do this. They, they're going to have to open the roof up and then close the roof back up until they can actually come. Because we're not demolishing the building, we're fixing the roof. So we can't leave the roof open. So I'm hearing that this decision needs to be made within seems, the next two days, right? It seems that it needs to be made fairly quickly. I think it, what I was going to suggest is that the, that the, the board recommend for the amount to cover that and then we make the decision sort of on the fly based on what information we get from. Can't, can't we also authorize you, Lynn and you to like, you know, come together and make that decision on our behalf? Rather, so that we don't have to meet again and that you all could, like, with confidence that you'll make the best decision? Yes, but I think Patrick's point is authorize, authorization of the spending. Like yes, that's what I'm yes. saying. Yeah. Authorizing the decision and the spending to both of you so that we you don't have to worry about yeah. reassembling us and that the, you can represent, Lynn can represent the board and the two yes. of you together can I guess, make that I guess decision. what Joanne is saying is that we would then have right. the flexibility to get a quote from another one not presented to the board. Right. With the understanding that we'd be getting, we'd be doing that if we were getting a better deal and any other factors that sports in that clarity on the Atlas one. So before there's a motion, before we vote, I am wondering um, like who's going to own this? Who's going to take this further and asking them what's the minimum number of samples that will suffice? Well, I'll try to get that information from the building inspector because presumably if we have a report done that says it's clear or there's a problem, who reviews that? Yeah. Presumably that's the person that issues the permit, so we kind of need to find out from him more information. Gary weighed in on it. Gary Berg from the Maintenance weighed in, but again, he's not really the authority, and he was sort of guessing. You know? Is the authority around this week and working and all of that? Can you I don't know. I have the building I got an, uh, like an office reply saying he's not here, so I don't know. So, uh, But other people have been CC, the town administrator CC, that I will. Um, try to try to track them down tomorrow, but uh, but that's where we stand as it, as it is, and, uh, and we, we may be limited. We may be, there's obviously the availability of any other testing firm that we might contact, or the, this company's you know ability to give us a better deal based on a small number. This may be just like this the low end of the spectrum. Who knows? We'll see. I didn't know if it was as easy as calling that company tomorrow and just say, hey. Can you do less testing for less money? But we, we need to know what the minimum yeah. amount of testing yeah. Yeah. That's is required. So yes. I mean, if, again, if we heard that it was 10, then I would say, well, do we, I, and I would go through John, because John is the person that's proposed this. This, this company is subcontracting through Gale. Gotcha. So anyway, that's where, that's where it stands. So yeah, we need to be able to have the, the leeway to make the decision on the line. So we need to make a motion to give you authority to work in our behalf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or and to spend whatever, up to yes. a finite. Is that enough of a motion? Can it be seconded? I think we just need to clarify up to how much. Well, I think it would be to the whole 3875. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we just I don't know if this figure has John's 15% in it. Uh, I that's a good point. Yeah, I think I made it. Uh, Eight, seven, five, nine, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 John had said that if Gail secures the subcontractor, they automatically add on 15%, which is what it's they've done the with the yes. yes, it is. But the proposal is directly from Atlas, 
who they had contacted to do the work. So I wanted to do the math in order to have a correct number for us to work with. Um, it takes it up to $4,456.25. So I would like to propose a motion that the trustees authorize up to $4,500 for the hazmat asbestos inspection with a decision about the company doing the work at the discretion of the director and the chair. I don't know. Can you make a motion about yourself? Well, you don't have to second it. No, I'm just thinking well, procedurally. I, I, I'm all in, but I just want it procedurally. I don't well, know. Well, then, Joy, you can make the motion. Yeah, yeah. Or Susan can what make you it. Like, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm all in. I see why she no. shouldn't be. Yeah, I don't know. Motion. Those are supposed to be funky sometimes. That's why I asked. That's crazy. I mean, it's a reasonable question. I don't know the answer. If okay. someone wants to someday challenge it, then I have no problem yeah. with someone else someday. making the motion. Yeah. But we still need someone to make that motion, and then we need a second. So I make a motion to authorize Patrick and Lynn to work on behalf of the trustees to make a decision on the hazmat asbestos inspection not to exceed four thousand five hundred dollars second is there any further discussion all in favor thank you why did i think that was going to be like a two hundred dollar test <laughs> well one of the other things is because there was the S the hazmat testing at the corner in the children's playroom um Patrick has been trying to get from Gary Burke what that portion of the cost was, just to have so some kind of comparison. Yeah. And we do not yet have that. May, may I ask one question? Of course. Before, uh, this is a state regulation that you have to do the hazmat testing before you do the um, renovation of some kind? Or I don't. Is it a municipal? You know, that, that is a good question. All I know is that we've been told. I'm that sure, it's not it. municipal. Yeah, it's either state or federal. And there's no and there's no scope in terms of, you know, uh, the age of the building. I'm just asking. Apparently not, not because yeah. we had to do it. Yeah. Where it seems the like such a ridiculous <laughs> yeah use of money. Anyway, I state that as my personal opinion, not as interesting. What office was it that told you this, Patrick? My personal opinion. We. Uh, found out about it. I found out about it through Gary Bird in the process of having the company come and do the restorative work in the children's room. And Gary works. He does the building maintenance for D, he, for DBW. He works for the town, in the Department of Public Works, as the building maintenance guy who is overseeing or organizing the, the the job and you know soliciting the proposals to have the people come out and. He conveyed to me that this was something that they needed to do before they could begin the work in earnest because they couldn't, you know, they knew the wall was damaged, but they had to take samples before they could like pull the drywall out and start going. I, I just missed that. which office it was. Yeah, that's what it was. And Gary is very experienced in town. Really oh, yeah. Know all about the different buildings. Yeah. But it's better he tells us now. I'm glad he's done it. Uh, about the roof or no, what am I on? We're on direction. Oh, we're on direction. Okay. Um, so it has been uh, a really busy week or month actually um, for me personally. I think for the library as well. I just wanted to point something out, something interesting. This is kind of neither here nor there, but um, I always report you know statistical information every month on how many days you know that. That's why there's 23 days, it's 140 hours that we were open, how many items were circulated. And you'll see here on the patron count, it says that versus September 2023, we were down 11% in terms of the total patron count. 
Well, that's an interesting thing because I started kind of looking at that just briefly when I was putting this together. And the reality is, is that September is not always September. You know, certain, again, because the way the calendar falls, there are months where we have 23 days and day, months where we have like 26, 12 you know. Um, and so the, the actual reality when you, when you worked out the averages for patrons per day or average for patrons per hour, we were not actually down 11%. We were still where we were the previous year. Sheer number of patrons for the whole month was numerically less and as a percentage less, but it was on, as a day to day thing, it's the same. I thought it was worth pointing that out because sometimes I always look at that and go, oh, you know, maybe we peaked, but it really isn't about that. We we're just as busy as we ever have been, and it's just that the, that the calendar itself is playing tricks on us. Um, Thanks for pointing that out because yeah. I think that's really important for everyone at this table and everybody watching this video yeah. to hear. Absolutely, absolutely. And I was surprised by it myself until I you know, started thinking about it. I said, "Well, obviously that's that's the case." Um, yeah, Long range plan. Wait, is, can I just point yeah. out? Yeah. Twenty-two programs with three hundred and fifty-five patrons attending. Do yeah. you have a concert? Like what? <laughs> A lot of the children's, pro, the children's programs on Tuesdays mm -hmm. and Thursdays, yeah. where you have one or two caregivers and one or two little ones, and those, this is all filled up parking on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. But it, it also, but there are more. That the, this, this number for us is down from where it was over the summer, because mm -hmm. the summer we had more programs and we had sometimes as much as like 600 people come to programs in the month. So um, so that this is actually fairly sedate um, for, the, for the past couple of months. Um, and yeah, it, the, the children's folks, the, the, the children's folks are cranking on programs and I'm, you know, I'm always saying like, everyone wants to do this thing. If you're doing it, it's because you think you can do it, but I didn't tell you to do that many. But people are loving it. It's just, it's just really the feedback is incredibly positive. So you know, good on them for yeah. being uh, the go getters that they are. And meeting room appointments remain high. Um, it's it's a constant. You know, we get probably a lot of five calls a day for meeting room you know reservations or changes in meeting room reservations. Patrick, yeah. can you oh, which one is the meeting room? Can you just point this room and the the conference room um, in the, that's off of the lobby, and then we also have added. We didn't intend to do this when we built, when we designed and moved into the building, but the local history room has become a, a de facto third meeting room because the demand is that that strong. So it's that study room that you're calling the meeting room as well? Yeah, sorry, I'm just no, using that term interchangeably, but yes, those, those are you know, small small studies, study rooms or small meeting rooms. This is the large meeting room and then the local history, um, which is essentially the same size as the study room. Um, so, uh, so is long range plan on here as a, it's on agenda? I don't know if I cover that now. It's not an agenda. Of, well, strategic planning. It's under. Okay, well, we'll, we'll leave that. We've been working on it, and I have some stuff to, to show you um, that's in progress. Um, so, a couple things that I wanted to throw your way for feedback and or um, action. The first one is that um, we are hoping to make a small alteration to the like room policy for this room. And the reason that we're wanting to do that is that um, we tend to have a certain, we have certain patron, patron groups or patron individuals that, um, that run really worthy and interesting programming, but they, they tend to to do this in a way that they want to like block book the room essentially for months in advance. For basically as long as we have a calendar that we can take reservations, they'll want to put the reservation down. And that's taking things off the table. In the initial form of the uh, the initial policy, we had a number of 24. <clears throat> 24 was the maximum in a year, in a year. And then in the first revision that we went through, we removed that and we put in that it was the director's discretion. And so I didn't, I never loved that, but I also think, it, I mean, the reality is that it, sure, there is that, but it, we needed something a little, I'm not the only person I can't be called to the desk every time somebody comes in that, that wants to, you know, to do something that is pushing against the guardrail. And also, I don't really want to have to go through the calendar 
and tally up how many times somebody's been in here. I don't want to have to have a scorecard to figure out how much someone is using something. So what we've decided that we would like to do, um, and also because this is causing frustration for a number of other people that want to come in and are finding that, that the room is is yeah. block booked for like whole stretches of time. So well, what about next one? They no, sorry, it's the same person using it. So what we decided to do in thinking this through, um, and I have the language here. Um, so the, the statement, the, the way it originally read, it, it read up to a certain point, and then I'll tell you where we're adding in this text. To ensure the library's meeting rooms are available to many audiences, limits may be placed on the number of reservations that will be accepted from any one group we would like to add. When scheduling a recurring event defined as more than two events in a sequence, the library cannot take reservations more than eight weeks in advance of the first event date and cannot accept more than six reservations at any one time. And that's going to put like a window on, on the, the event horizon. So that if, if someone comes in and they say, well, I want to do like 12 events, well, you need to do that within, you need to come, well, first of all, you wouldn't be able to do 12 because you can only do six at a time, but you'd have to be here within eight weeks. That gives other people the chance to yeah. have made reservations a couple of months. Because a lot of people are organized enough and they'll say, yeah, I want to do something in two or three months. And they will put their markers down for certain things. And then the block booker will come in and they'll be like, well, I either have to take what I can get or I have to take it elsewhere. And it's going to, it, and I think what's happening is that we're having, uh, this is sort of going to be at the expense and making the, the block booker sad. But, the block booking of rooms is making so many more individuals sad that they can't get what they want in this resource. So I think it's going to help. So do you expect any pushback on this particular policy shift? I don't think so. I don't see. I don't. I don't see why. Okay, the policy is a policy. Of campers. Um, I, I think this is great as someone who's trying to book rooms and like had to go through like it being filled all the time. I also think, and this is like speaking a little bit ahead, um, when we think about long range plan and we think about hours and Friday, like I think if we have another night that we're open till eight o'clock, yep. we might be able to add, you know, people well, like to be in here Wednesday, we're open, it's like, so if there's another, if we move to another evening, then it, it will ease tempo. But, but I like this a lot. If we can, if we can get the fobs working, themselves, then they would, yes. there would be a, yes, that much would agree, longer, but, agree, but, but even so, we still want we still want to put a lid on things I, that are happening just constantly and every day. Yeah. Every day. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Why not just use the new proposed language in place of what was already there? In place of. To ensure the libraries, like to get rid of to ensure the library, yeah. and instead put Wednesday. I think it explains the principle of why we're trying to right. keep, we're trying to have a policy that is fair and equitable, and it gives this privilege to the broadest number of people that are wanting to use it. I mean, I think it, it bears repeating, um, and I think okay. this also you know still falls under the caveat <clears throat> that that in certain it's just, I mean elsewhere in the policy it still says it's under the discretion of the director. So if there is some compelling reason why something needs to happen. Sorry, you, it's really important that you, you have seven and it's going to be in, in you know, violation of the policy because we only say you can do six. Well, this seems like something that we can maybe bend on, you know, okay. um, if there's a compelling reason for it. So we'll have to read it twice, right? Is that how we have to do it? So. Yeah. So it's presented this time and then at our next meeting, we'll. Is this something that requires a vote or not? Yes. Yes. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to mention was that, uh, if you will recall, we, the board approved the use of money from the Charlotte Smith Fund um, that is held at the Community Foundation of Western Mass for us to use for uh, some a portion of our summer programming. So we had a number of programs that were science related, nature related. Um, they went really well. I think it, that use was consistent with what we know of uh, Ms. Smith. And um, what I'm wanting to do is, 
Yeah, oh, um, quick question, just wondering about the money and the commas and all of that. Is that a typo? I'm sorry, what is Which it? We have $4 million in the Charlotte Smith Fund. Is there an extra five? We, yeah, I think that's a, that is a typo. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. I was, <laughs> I was very excited. I don't know what the typo is, but yes, that is a typo. So this is the correct it's, amount, I'm sorry? It's, it's more like 467. Yeah, okay. Yeah, take out that zero. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Even so, even so, it's a lot of fun. Um, and it is, it is at, under, under current circumstances, it is growing appreciably month to month. I mean, it, it's actually kind of astounding. Um, same with the, with the library fund balance. So um, I would like to request that we get into um, a routine of doing what we do with the friends, where the library goes to the friends, for instance, and puts together a proposal for what we would like for the year. I'd like us to do the same thing. I'm going to be working with the staff as soon as is agreeable to do the same thing, to be putting together the ask for the friends and the ask for Charlotte Smith and doing it at the same time. So basically at the end of the year, so that we have the funding in place to get the ground running at the beginning of the, the next calendar year. So I have a figure for you. As yeah. the person who kind of encourage the friends to move to that model. I really like that model because it really shows, and it, I think it's good for a lot of reasons. Like when we when we decide to go for donors, we try to, you know, we can, we have numbers and facts from when we try to raise money for our own as trustees. Well, I think it displays confidence yes. in the folks who are making the decisions. And if they have a sense of what the total amount available is, as opposed to piecemeal amounts, right. it allows for more effective planning and use of the funds and you know, setting up a schedule that I think will achieve the ends that they have in mind, even if it's just fun. Yeah, yeah and just to put it in perspective, because I had to report this to the, the Board of Library Commissioners when I did the state reporting for this year, but these funds may probably together, be, you know, between them in the course of the years in terms of income, they probably made somewhere between fifty and seventy thousand dollars. Right. So I mean, we could make a commitment of like, you know, spending less than it made. Yeah. Like, absolutely. You know, yeah. 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 Um, do you want us to vote on that tonight? I don't want you to vote on it. I just wanted you to, I mean, unless you want to vote somehow on, on principle, but I think what I would like to do is, assuming that it's agreeable, that I just come back next time with a proposal that you then vote on and say, yes, go ahead and take that much out of the, out of the account. Do I sense consensus among all of the members for this group? Yes. Excellent. Great. Go forth. Uh, and, uh, Children's wall repair. The gym is closed currently. I don't know if uh, anybody's been in the library this week and seen, but it's, there's a big sheet of plastic in the middle of the room and they are tearing it apart. Um, I, I'm told they will be done by the end of the week, but I haven't had an update since they actually started the work. Did you need to have that special asbestos check for that room? Yes, that's how, that's how we found out that this was a requirement. All right, and, but yet, we would also need that special asbestos check for the roof. Different materials. Okay, I was just thinking maybe if you had done it recently, one might cover two events. They're different places. Different materials. Different uh, yeah, two different. Yeah, no, can I mean, you know, it's not me. Yeah. Go ahead and try. <laughs> Go ahead and try, Jack. I mean, it's, it is worth asking. I think the only person right. that really answered the question is how right. does that satisfy or not? Okay. Um, uh, roof evaluation to that, access hardware. Um, I'm very happy to report that we have a functioning front door for the first time in four years. We have a, a, a button. We have the, all the buttons that are mechanically operating the door are now working for people. There's a key box on the wall that you go and turn the key, and if we're closed and want to open, it sucks the bar in and the door's just open freely. And the button so we can press the outside button yeah. during the day and it works. Yep. Okay. I'm going to talk just to do that. Yeah, come back and try. We get to look at grand opening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little thing. Yeah, it's a little thing. It's very exciting. It's very exciting. 
out here. We did have a little we did have a little snafu on the first day that it was up and running where we went and put the key in and turned it and it didn't do anything, so we couldn't lock the couldn't lock the building. So I had to call Gary after hours. He, he you know, very gratefully came down and, and uh, figured it out. He had to like actually pull it apart, basically disable it until the next day, and then the company came back and got it working. But it was we don't have a baseline above the button that says this button works. No. <laughs> Yeah, if this button is uncovered, it works. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's great. I don't have, at this point, I don't have an update on when the FOB access will be in place. And I have reached out um, to the town administrator to try to you know, get a sense if, he, if he's um, got an equal eye on this. Because it's, it's, oh, 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 yeah, okay, okay. It's okay, multiple yeah, buildings that are affected. It's not just us. This, okay. this is a town wide program for building access. So, no. Just wondering. And that's that's pretty much what I've got aside from um, you know, from this stuff. Uh, uh, what was that? Friends meeting. Anything about it? Yes. Uh, the friends are running a uh, silent auction currently this month. I don't off the top of my head. I don't know what the date is. It's later. No. Nah. It, it's the. It, no, it's now. It's now. No, it's it's now. I know it's running, but I don't know when it ends. Oh, that's the twenty sixth. I think that's, it's so. Okay, that sounds right. Uh, so you've got a couple of weeks left to get your bids in, and um, Patty pulled out all the stops. She got a ton, a ton, a ton of, uh, of local businesses to participate in this. So if you, you know, there's a display on the, on the countertop uh, across from the circulation desk, and you can see what's up for grabs. Um, she bundled gift cards, so they're not just individual yes. items. Um, I, I, from my recollection of last month, um, that was the main business of that meeting. I, I can't remember if there was something else major. I don't think there was anything else major to report. Um, nothing, nothing is coming to mind. Um, and well, there was something else that you, oh, oh, there was one other thing, and you reminded me of it earlier. So uh, the special town meeting is coming up in November, and um, we had put in a new request capital request for ten thousand dollars to add ten essentially ten new computers to the um, you know the fleet of computers that we already have not to replace them but to add to double the number uh, and so uh, in going to the review we went we went to the the capital um, planning committee's review we went to the meeting we you know did our pitch um, I had a meeting with Linda Sanderson to talk about this she has a slightly different strategic take on this. She's, I, for, for reasons that I'm not really clear on, but reasons to do with what they want to present or what they want to borrow for, she's suggesting that we put our request into the operating budget and split it in two. So it asks for $5,000 in special town meeting as a budget adjustment, and $5,000 that would roll forward into the next year's budget would just stay in there as $5,000 per year for such costs um, and so you know I have, I have my reasons for being a little bit gun shy about doing that but it's her, her it's her doesn't that also then change the the book line like if we change the budget request then the book funding numbers have to change or will 5,000 not change it that much it won't the, change it that much but. but they also made changes to what counts as materials it's not just well so so one thing about that is that um and i'm not sure if this is what you're referring to but but um if we bought five thousand dollars worth of computers um some or all of that money would count towards our materials expenditure uh, you could pay you could buy techno technology related items gotcha. and okay. count them towards yeah, that's that is budget. new to my time yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no that's a fairly recent development yeah so before you move on from director's report and all of this, when it comes to building repairs and all of this, so right now we have the logical next step to find out what's going on. Do we need to be looking a few steps down or wait and see what they determine, Gail, in their assessment of the roof before thinking ahead? I don't know how we could okay. anticipate. Right. What so to do next? 
A wait and see. Okay. And also a second question: How many, how many holes are they um, putting into the roof? Do you have any sense? Like how many eight points? To ten. For the chest. Yeah. For the chest. I thought it was eight to ten. Okay. I don't know how big the holes are, I don't know, I don't know, but I, you know, I mean, it seems like they're only going to be here for a, a day or two days, so it can't be that, that enormous. Uh, and I believe by the time Gail leaves, everything should be repaired and back in the state that it was in, and everybody should be coming back. They're supposed to be overseeing the thing from start to finish. Okay. okay. Jeff, do you want to do your lead update real quickly before we get into strategic planning, mm -hmm. just to make sure Yes, so a couple of months ago I contacted Phil O'Brien, who was the designer, and um, we discussed putting in for lead certification, and he said he would take care of that. And he, as of a week ago, he's heard nothing new. That was the very latest report. He did sort of intimate that it takes a while to hear back, to know, you know if we'll qualify, and all of that. So. So Jack, who's determining whether they were qualified or not? So it'll be the lead agency? Um, for the state? I think for the state, probably mm -hmm. for the state. Okay. Yeah. Do we know, uh, I don't really do know, but do you have to call from previous conversations about lead? Are we expecting a visit from anyone? Do they need to come and actually look at the building? Or do they actually just look at the So part of the challenge in all of this is Bill uh, isn't necessarily effusive in sharing the details about how this all works. Mm -hmm. So not knowing much about lead and all of that, um, we're just not hearing much from him. So one thought about that is that there is um, there is something that works for JRA that is like sort of like the lead commissioning agent. We may want to find out who that is and just contact them directly and just bypass Bill and just ask this person and then. Yeah. If you can send me that information, I will see if I can find it. I'm happy to put out an email and include you and see if we can get this moving. Because the, the money is pretty significant, mm -hmm. actually. striking. One is the gender, uh, this is a gender disparity, uh, 
72% of respondents to the survey were females, 27% were male. Um, I thought that was striking. I wouldn't have thought that the, that the disparity would have been as large as that. I would have thought it would have been maybe like 60, 40 or something like that. But that, that, uh, that was interesting to me. Um, and then it's also interesting if you look at the age, um, the ages here, if you combine the, these two decades of um, you know, demography, that's, um, what is that? That's nearly that. So that's 40%. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, these are supposed to have percentages displayed here so you can actually see it. But that's, uh, that's like 40% uh, of the total. Whereas from 50 to 80 plus, that's only 45%. You know, so it skews a little bit younger than I would have expected. And I, obviously, you know, we do a lot with the programming, and you know, you see a lot of like young parents coming with children. And I think that's a big part of this. We do have a lot of um, you know younger people that come in in their twenties and thirties, but it does seem to be like a driven. This is a sort of a family. It might. So I, I also want to say that rather than like I'm saying throwing things out there now, but we haven't really drawn conclusions from this. This is just data, but some things to me are striking, and so I am kind of. I think it also will address the fact that people say, well, younger people don't use libraries. Right? It's, right. Like, it's like a direct, that's yeah. often what we hear, right? Like, libraries are going away, they're not for the future. And I feel like this absolutely shows that young well, people um, are at least responding to our survey. But I think it shows the, the importance younger people place in a library. Younger, younger adults. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Well, then you can look at it that way. You can also say younger adults are more prone to take the survey. Yes, you know, this I agree. Is I agree. Your point is well taken. What you yep. had said earlier, this isn't the actual um, demography of people who are using the library. This is who did the survey. Exactly. And that's why I always respond to the or, or, as I'm writing this as a narrative, I'm always referring to them as response. It's not yes. just like the yeah. like patrons that have mm -hmm. But my point is that we do have a nice yes. grouping. Like it's it's how the same. Like, yeah. 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 Do you have an average number for the three weeks of people who took the survey? It was about two hundred a week. We have on the yes. first one and the third one, we had about two twenty. This one in the middle was about two sixty. Yeah, that was our week. Yeah. 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 The middle one. Yeah. 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 So we, we set out with a with a model school of getting two hundred two hundred for each survey and we were lucky to surpass that. Um, so I feel like, the, you know, I mean, what the, unless there's something, I, and this is one of those things where I, I really, you know, wish we had something like Allison who has like a, a mind for this and a background in it to really look at this, because I'm sure, I, and I know, there are flaws mm -hmm. with how we put this together. And some things, you know, I can point out that, you know, as you said. And afterward, I was like, oh. Yeah, well, I mean, nothing's, nothing's perfect, but I think this gives us a place to start. And we can also, the, the thing is, we can always, always ask more questions. We can always go back to the public and ask more questions. Particularly, one thing that we're planning to do already is to, um, and this is typical of li li public libraries, is to have um, teen advisory groups where you have teenagers that will get together, you incentivize them to come in, we'll give you free pizza, we want to like basically have like a focus group with you and you know about things that concern you, you know, because teenagers are, are sort of like a, a quiet group that's hard to really get good information about. Um, so we will, we're going to continue to ask questions, and hopefully some of that will feed into the long-range plan. But for now, I think we have a lot to, to start with. So children in the home, this was also pretty striking that 58% um, of respondents indicated that they had children of some age in the home. So and we, we asked the question. Um, but that goes with your pointing out that the largest two groups were going to be probably in that parenting age. Yeah. Yes. yeah, no, it's totally consistent. Um, but it is it is interesting. Uh, so we had we had a, a, a pretty good distribution. even distribution as far as what the what the um, mm -hmm. school level, but the two biggest ones were elementary and preschool. And that was more than half in that uh, in that grouping. Uh, and uh, that was even interesting that there was a considerable number uh, that had college age kids living at home. Um, not surprising that the majority of respondents were having residents. 
not surprising that the majority of respondents were not students. Uh, time spent on a typical visit was interesting because the majority, the vast majority of people who were here were spending, well, it's not surprising that they were spending less than two hours. What was more interesting to me was that the majority were spending 30 minutes to two hours. That the, I would have thought that the majority would have been in and out to do their, you know, to do their business and be gone. <laughs> But uh, a larger group was saying that they came and spent a considerable amount of time here um, doing things such as how to use the library um, and the, the, the largest numbers of respondents. And you can see, obviously, you were able to pick all that applied. So this is not a this doesn't add up to 100%, but 63%, uh, no, sorry, 68, 68% 68 said they browsed, that was the most popular. 60, uh, also about 68% checkout materials are requested, and uh, close to 50% attend the library program, followed by 35% reading, and then after that, you, you know, you kind of get down into a number of different things um, that are not quite as consistent across the board. Still, and were those were those yeah. all the given options, or did people? So there were. So two, this is one of those flaws that that um, this is one of the flaws that that we discovered. So there, there were a couple things here. So in this one, you can see it does have a tender library program, and you see fifty percent of people responded that they were coming to library programs. And then I'm going to go back up. I'm going to skip this, but um, for instance, if if HBO is the library that you use the most, tell us why. Um, Programs was not part of the, uh, was not one of the options that we, had, that we had placed there. So, we do, sorry. Yeah, so, then, so we, we missed, a, missed a trick on that one, so we can't really see, but there were certain, um, there were certain, you could put in other, and so there were a number of people that would put in, go to a program, or put in something that was equivalent to that, and we tried to tally that with whatever the most applicable um, option was, so that, in this case, would have been services. So some of that is hidden. Um, in terms of what it specifically means, but um, how do you slow it? Well, we just did that one, and then if there's another library that you use more than HBL, um, not surprisingly, the Jones was the was the, the number one by a, a wide margin that people tended to use because so many people would have it even closer to the Jones than to, to HBL. Uh, followed by not closely, but followed the only one that was really even rivaling was the was the Jones, uh, and these are averages. Each of the uh, their averages across the three surveys. So in in you know each survey we're roughly getting twelve, five, and then less than one. Um, if it's down to point three three three, it means like one person on one survey that each of it. But it, there weren't that many. I was actually surprised there wasn't more um, a longer tail on this one because people do come from all over the place. Um, yeah, that's it. So the, the la that last question, if uh, this is the library that you used the most, tell us why location was um, head and shoulders above the rest as far as that goes. I think it, it goes without saying that we have an incredible location and an you know, incredible crossroad, a big confluence of traffic going through here. So that, that's not surprising at, at all. It's nice to know that the next um, highest response was to the services that we provide and um, which is closely related to staff mm -hmm. right well yeah and, and very closely followed by staff themselves so that that was all um, was all very good um, hours I mean, that that was something that there were there were comments and I don't have the comments here to, sh to share but some of the comments we will get to that in compiling I think yeah. what will be the I don't know what the comments so hours are not most popular. Is this uh, is this available online that we can go to? Uh, it is. It's not yet, and as we're working on it, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll share it probably ahead of the next the next meeting. We should have a, a better okay. presentation of the all of the, the stats together that Great. that I can share. Preliminary. And that, that's pretty much it. Does anybody have anything, uh, any observations or questions about about this? Well, I think Amherst and Northampton both have significant, I mean, they're the only two libraries on the list that have much larger collections. Yes. And some people actually wrote, because yes. like, I'm looking at one response where they actually wrote Forbes Library, um, bigger selection. Forbes 
broader selection. Yeah. So that is generally the yeah, and that's a fair. I mean, I I, I tend to go oh, <laughs> but it's it's just a fair objective. Yes. They do. Right. They do. Yes. There's just no argument with it. If that's what you want. And hours for the other thing. Yeah. Forbes more out longer hours. Sure. Um, Patrick, do you know? Uh, uh, probably do. The um, in terms of what's uh, taken out, um, how much comes from the collection? How much comes from the interlibrary? You know, from the CW. Mars. How much of our circulation is internal versus? Yeah, versus. Internal. I mean, that is. You know, if people. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people come to because they've ordered a book or sure. you know take it out versus you know they're searching collections. Yes, I, I could give you a percentage breakdown. But the majority of it is our own collection. Oh, it is. Oh, vast. Mm -hmm. More. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Yes. So people are still hunting, you know, as opposed to hunting online, they're hunting in a library for what they want to read. Or they're doing both. Yeah. They're definitely doing both. And, and yeah. a, lot, a lot of our users are extremely savvy uh, and are placing their own holds mm -hmm. and, you know, also taking out an envelope of stuff over here, particularly a lot, mm -hmm. of, uh, a lot of parents, and particularly a lot of parents are they're choosing things for their kids, they're right. choosing things that they need for school curriculum. They're choosing things for their own, either parenting needs or just pleasure needs. So they're, right. they're coming in and getting a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, but the, we are a uh, we are a net lender. Uh, sorry, we're a net borrower uh, in terms of in a library loan. We borrow more than we send out, but that's not surprising because larger libraries have again that wider selection. And, um, well, some of the more esoteric things. More esoteric things, right. and, and they also just have more copies available mm -hmm. for certain things where right. when a title is in demand, it's probably going to come from another library rather than from our collection to meet that demand. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but yeah, but, but the bulk of actual circulation comes from bulk and bulk, mm -hmm. for sure. I'll make two comments because I have been involved in both of these projects. One is the children's room now has a fairly large selection of parenting books or books that are about developmental things along the age of children. It's not just young children. So a lot of those things that had been in adult nonfiction are now physically located in the children's room. Um, and Julia's idea is that parents of particularly small children often don't really have the opportunity to go and browse the adult shelves mm -hmm. if they're trying to hold on to hands or keep track of critters. Mm -hmm. So that's why that move has taken place. Mm -hmm. And it actually it actually used to be that way in a good way too. We have the, we have those books pulled and in their own section for for that reason because all the nonfiction the nonfiction stacks were downstairs, so the parent would have to like either pick up the kid and take his thing downstairs or, or whatever. But, but the creepy so or terrible stairs. Is there, is there any uh, knowledge of how that affects the borrowing of those books? Has it this is too increased? Recent. The number of, of that collection. That collection. Yeah, it, it just happened within the last month, so I yeah. don't, I don't think we know yet. But um, it's an interesting idea. It makes sense. But yeah, but I think just having a closer at hand will allow the staff to be able to make recommendations more. Oh, we have something over here that might help with what you're talking about. And also the um, the group that does the um, the Tuesday morning the Tuesday morning play group. They provide a lot of um, referrals for, for various services and, and support. For this is for, for the parents of the children's play group. Uh, and so the folks that are involved in that are very knowledgeable. And having that collection close to hand will allow that person who, who's there as, a, as an educator, as a social worker, um, as a point of contact, will be able to, be able to, to say, oh, we have this as a support, as a resource for them as well. Mm -hmm. So we could be worse well in a number of ways. Nice. Mm -hmm. So do we have any other business? I would encourage you to take, if you want, a quick look at the friends 
silent auction. Can we go there? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay? Absolutely. Sorry, I didn't even look through. I gave them permission to go to the silent auction. Oh, right? oh, sure. Okay. Sure, sure. Motion to adjourn. Second. So moved. All in favor. Go. <laughs>